Imagine you are a little crab just chilling near the beach and minding your own business when all of a sudden you get blasted with a hydro cannon and your little crab colony gets destroyed in less than a second. Wow, that got dark real quick. But yeah, that's basically the consequences of maining Nuvolet. Believe it or not, it has already been 20 days since Nuvolet was released. And honestly speaking, Nuvolet's playstyle is definitely something that we have never seen before yet in Genshin. It's got a tremendous amount of damage and AoE, so the enemies won't be able to resist any attacks. To make him even more busted, Nuvolet can also heal himself, so he doesn't really need any healers on his team. With Nuvis' terrifying damage output and AoE, ability to self-sustain as a DPS, and on top of that being Hydro, which in my opinion is the best element in the game, I even challenged myself with Nuvi to attempt the Spiral Abyss by himself, without any other characters to support him. During the 20 days that I main him, I definitely learned a lot about Nuvi, and I had a blast playing him. Without further ado, here's how I brought Nuvolet from 0 to hero in 20 days. So on the first day, as you probably expected, since Nuvolet is a new character, I pulled for him. Using a ritual suggested by one of my viewers, I had to go to the Fontaine Opera and sit on Nuvis' chair of judgment. Long story short, I was able to get him on my first temple. And now the fight. Stars that... I mean, 4 stars that I have are already... C6, so it would be better if I can win a 50-50. Sure. I also just equip some artifacts on him and immediately set off to try him out. Since Nuvi is still at level 1, his damage output was still on a lower end. But it was cool to see how long his Hydro Cannon lasts and the size of the AoE. I also dabbled into the newest 4.1 Fontaine region to do some mini exploration and collected some chests. In order to also ascend Nuvolet, I had to pick up some starfishes near the beach. And since it was a new material as well, I had to run around a new area in order to collect them. Thanks to Lenny, he was able to mark the Fontaine specialties on the minimap. So it definitely made collecting the materials easier. So throughout my time attempting to master the characters in my Zero to Hero series, I usually set goals for myself to achieve in the next 20 days. So far, I've completed all my goals, so this time, I'm making New Valetis a bit more difficult for me to achieve. First, I want to get New Valet to level 90. This is going to be the easiest mission for me, so I'll definitely be able to complete it. My second goal is to deal 50k charge attacks. Now, I'm not sure how hard New Valet hits with his charge attacks yet, but hopefully I'll be able to complete this goal. The third goal might not be possible, but I'm gonna try soloing the floor 12 of the Spiral Abyss with New Valet. Yes, soloing means without anyone else but New V on the team. To make this challenge even harder, I'm also going to go for 36 stars because this will put more pressure on me. My fourth goal might be luck based, but I'm gonna try and reach 300% crit damage with New V. To achieve this, I might need to wish for a signature weapon, and I also get some artifacts with crit damage substats as well. I'm not really expecting to complete this goal, but it'll be nice if I can hit it. Finally, my fifth goal is to learn something new that I didn't know about Nuvolet, what can be just about anything. And at the end of the video, we'll go over these goals again to see whether we've completed them or not. Continuing day one, I stumbled upon the underwater cave while exploring, and eventually reached a purple unicorn world boss. We actually had to farm the seahorse boss for new visas essential materials, so I started a battle. This boss has an electro shield that we had to destroy first before we could deal more damage. And unfortunately for Nuvolet, he cannot destroy the shield by himself since he's Hydro. On top of that, he was only level 2 at this time, so I got one shotted by the boss. Thankfully, Nahida along with Lenny was able to carry us in the end, and we defeated the boss. Unfortunately, things didn't go so well in the beginning, since I got 2 unicorn materials instead of 3. So I ended my first day here. To start off day 2, I enhanced a new artifact set for V. Just so I could achieve the 4 piece Marisasi Hunter set, which is also the best in slot for him. I also leveled him up to 19, so hopefully he won't die that easily now. I continued doing some explorations in Fontaine, and brought Yaimiko to form an Electro Charge team. Lenny was still in my team because I also needed him to farm the Starfishes for New V. Yaes' taser comp was surprisingly super fun with New V because once my charge attack was over, the enemies just got automatically juggled in midair, which looked pretty funny to me. I also collected a few more starfishes underwater, and just spent the rest of my day giving the enemies a shower of Nuvi. After defeating some ruin guards, I also got to level 20 naturally, so I was able to ascend Nuvi and got him to level 39 before I ended the day. On day 3, I was able to ascend Nuvolet again. After that, I just went to challenge the purple unicorn to hopefully seek revenge from before. This time, I actually didn't have Nahida with me, so this battle was a bit more challenging as Lenny was the only one that could destroy the shield. Since I ascended new V, he was able to dish out a bit more damage now with around 3k charge attacks. In the end, we successfully got revenge on the seahorse and completed the fight without any casualties. 
We were also rewarded with three unicorns as well, so I was happy. I spent the rest of my day exploring the new areas and found some chests along the way. I beat up a few enemies as well and discovered a few waypoints before calling it a day. I started day 4 with my daily visit to the purple unicorn. Since I had Nahida with me this time, the boss was pretty easy. Coupled with Cookie triggering Hyper Bloom and Nuvi hosing down the horrors, this fight ended in less than a minute. Apparently the boss didn't like that so it only dropped 2 unicorns for our trouble. On the bright side, that was enough for me to ascend Nuvi and level them up as well, so it kinda worked out for us. Anyways, I decided to continue with his Hyper Bloom team and it was decent. Shinjo doesn't really work as well with Nuvalet since he's a charge attack DPS, but his energy regeneration helped out with firing off Nuvi's bursts. The Hyper Bloom team comp also worked out pretty nicely with Nuvalet as well, and since he's a Catalyst user, his Hydro applications were really good. I was able to level up Nuvi's talents to level 4 before heading off for the night. I began my morning routine with a seahorse bowling to start my 5th day. At this point, I was already pretty used to the boss's mechanics and attack patterns. So before we knew it, the unicorn became a myth. As expected, we got 2 drops again, so that made me an emo. I decided to channel my emo energy against some crabs, and also farm the materials they drop since Nuvi needs them for the talents. I was able to give the crabs a nice shower and got a nice haul of materials. Kazuo was able to help out with grouping the enemies together which made it easier for Nuvi to host the enemies down all at once. At this point, I was still familiarizing myself with Nuvalet's kit, so there were definitely some things I had to get used to. His charge attacks with level 4 talents were dealing around 9k each, so there was still a lot of room for growth. I opened a few chests and decided to start for the day. So on day 6, I went to have another date with a horse. I actually tried out a Nilo Super Bloom team with Baizu healing us. And all I can say is, the seahorse did not have a good time going against us. With one single rotation, we managed to take down the boss easily, and was rewarded with 3 unicorn drops for our effort. Afterwards, I actually joined some co-op worlds from people in my discord server to take the starfish essential materials for Nuvi. Because of this, I was able to collect enough materials to finally ascend Nuvalet again, and leveled him up to 69. In addition, I also got his talents up to level 6 as well. But yeah, special shoutouts to everyone that offered me their starfish once again. To finish off the first week, I decided to complete the Fontaine weekly bounties. The first enemies we had to fight was the web ball, so it was immune to Nuvi's hydro attacks. I just left it to Raiden and Beidou to take care of it, and it worked out great for us. Next, we had to fight the mecha enemies that were just chilling in the fields. I used a taser team comp with double hydro and electro, and I could say that this team was decent. Nuvi was doing around 8k charge attacks at this time, and it was here that I realized Nuvi's weakness. After getting attacked, my charge attacks were cancelled immediately which was pretty bad since it results in a DPS loss for us. The only way to prevent getting staggered is to use a shield or get a C1 constellation. Even though my Beto does generate a shield for my team, it breaks pretty easily for us. After playing around with Nuvi for a week now, getting his constellation is definitely tempting for me, especially with how strong his damage output is. Anyways, I went and completed the rest of my weekly reputation quests and ended my first week here. On day 8, I decided to try out a freeze team with Nuvalet. This team was pretty scuffed, because Yelan, like Shincho, doesn't really work that well with Nuvi, but she generates a good amount of energy for him. I had sent her to buff my charge attacks, and I was able to hit 10k as well for the first time. I also went to destroy a crab colony as well, since we still needed to farm their drops to level up Nuvi's talents. The freeze combo in general was okay, but Nuvi's AoE attack was big enough that it didn't really matter if the enemies were frozen or not. We'll still be able to hit them easily. But I'll have to admit though, Nuvi's playstyle was just really fun and satisfying to the point I actually enjoyed farming, which is something I usually dread doing. After farming, I just went to see my favorite seahorse and proceeded to give it a nice shower before tucking it to bed. I only got 2 unicorns, so that was unfortunate. On day 9, I decided to start off by hanging out with my little pony again. My newbie is actually at a point where he can actually deal solid damage against a boss now. So we were able to defeat a boss pretty fast. Afterwards, I decided to farm for some Doritos. I tested out a Hyper Fridge comp to see how well it fares against the enemies. And it was actually really good. With Kirara and Layla, I basically had two shields on me. So I was able to protect Nuvi from getting interrupted. Hyper Bloom, as you know, is also really strong as well. So it definitely helped out with the damage output for Nuvalet. It was pretty fun just to run around the desert area and give the enemies a shower. And even without Nahida, i say my Hyper Bloom team definitely holds up with the damage as well. I was able to get a good grasp of this team comp, and after farming a bunch of Doritos, I went to try out this team against the giant crab in Fontaine. I used to have a lot of trouble destroying this boss's shields, but Nuvalet could solve this problem fairly easy by just aiming up at a shield. After that, it's just another day at work for Nuvi, and we quickly dispose of the crab. So now we're at our halfway point, and so far, there were definitely some challenges learning Nuvalet. His charge attacks is pretty cool and does really good damage, but we're basically a sitting duck without a shield character. This will probably lead to some problem for us in the future, especially if we want to clear floor 12 of the abyss with him solo. 
Anyways, I went to a different Hyper Boom team to go against the Seahorse boss. Just to see how well this goes. With Kirara and Baizu's combined shield, Newbie could just charge attack without having to worry about getting interrupted by the boss's attack. Since we have double Dendro, we could easily destroy the Electro Shield as well. And after that, you know what happens. I was able to get 3 Unicorn drops, so it was good. Afterwards, I just returned to Fontaine for some quick farming. I continue on with a double shield team as well since my new V is still C0. Layla helped out by freezing the enemies, so it made the fight really easy. I was also able to get a good amount of farming done, so I ended the day here. On day 11, I started out with a unicorn fight again. This time, I brought a Hyper Bloom team comp, which depleted the boss's HP relatively quickly. After finishing the fight, I got two unicorns again. But on the bright side, I was able to finally ascend Nuvlet to level 80 and finally reach 200% crit damage. With Nuvi almost maxed out, I was also able to deal consistent 10k damage with my charge attacks. I also went to the island with the four ruin guards and gave them a nice little power wash. But since I didn't have any shield, I got interrupted by their attacks. Thankfully, I was able to take advantage of my burst's invincibility frames and got out of harm's way in the end. I went around finding more ruin guards and just blasted them to death. After collecting the drops, I just decided to end my day here. I started day 12 crafting some talent materials and leveled up Nuvis' talent to level 8. I tried using a vaporized team comp to fight the enemies in Fontaine. This team is basically the international team. And if you watch my Childhood Zero to Hero video, then it's pretty similar, but this time with Nuvalet as a Hydro character. This team comp actually doesn't really do anything for Nuvi, besides maybe being good for Vaporize. But I just wanted to try it out. In case you didn't know, Nuvalet skills by HP, so Benetta's attack buffs doesn't really help that much. So far, my charge attacks were still doing around 10k damage, mainly because I only had one stack of the past Draconic Glory. By this time, I hadn't really learned about the stacks, so I didn't really know how important it was to my damage. Anyways, I returned to the Seahorse Den and unleashed all my bursts. We instantly did around 50% of the boss's health, and soon afterwards, we just got rid of the boss. We were also rewarded with 3 Unicorns this time, so we ended Day 12 on a good note. On Day 13, I went around Sumeru to hunt the Ruined Drake enemies. I was using a Hyper Boom team again, and this team can basically one-shot the enemies with a reaction damage. Kirara's shield was able to provide a safety net for me as well, so Nuvi could just charge attack without any worries. Even against enemies that had wings, Nuvi was able to still target the enemies easily, so it was nice. My Hydro Cannon can go do the big enemies as well, which made farming multiple enemies very convenient for us. I also went to water my mushrooms as well, but I might have overdone it. But hey, that's fine. To finish up the day, I went to give my pet horse a nice shower and just logged out for the night. To start off the second week, I took Nuvalet along to farm some domains. I was able to deal 20k damage for the first time thanks to Kazuha, and completed the domain pretty quickly. This team comp kinda suffers defensively, since Nuvi was essentially a setting duck without his shield. Fortunately, this domain wasn't really that difficult for us, so we were still able to complete all of our runs pretty efficiently. Since I still needed to max ascend Nuvalet, I went back to our favorite location and used the same Hyper Broom team to fight the Seahorse. I used Hydro Cannon to blast the boss, and after a while, it finally went down, and we got another 3 Unicorn drops, making us really close to finally being able to ascend Nuvi. So on day 15, I actually did a challenge on my Twitch stream in order to get Nuvalet's weapon. To summarize, I basically did a tempo every time my 1 HP Hu Tao dies fighting a random boss and I spun the wheel to fight. Anyways, after dying to Azdaha, I got one of my luckiest pulls of the year. What does that bet know you guys give me better give me some power-ups right now? Just like do some kind of emo or something. If you guys are subbed. Or just spam both you lose if you L if you want me to lose. Okay. Whatever. Okay, I'll just do 20 pulls right now. There are two moves that I can't dodge. It. Dash. Ooh. I don't know what pity I'm in. I might I supposed to get something good. Get a weapon and then the challenge is over. Let's get the book. Not last prayers. The book. Square. Not last prayers though. I don't know what that book is called. Just blue. Blue book. Okay. It's very close now, I think. Oh! Yeah, I basically got a weapon within 20 pulls. So because of that, I continued the challenge and decided to pull for C1 newbie as well. After a bit of wishing later, this happened. One more real boss battle for Black. Okay, I got a fight, so I'm not doing it anymore. I, I'm not doing it anymore. It's 76 now. Alright, 67 now, I think? Ooh. That was fast. Why are you doing just join the stream? Winning 50-50s, like... It's my breakfast, I guess. So now I have both Nuvalis' weapon and his constellation, which I'll activate later in the video. On day 16, I went to Fontaine to farm for the boss since I needed them to ascend Nuvis' weapon. Right now, I'm still using a prototype Amber, and it's still a really good free-to-play option for him. 
I also just stuck the Hyper Boom Team Calm as well since it was pretty effective against the ball enemies. Afterwards, I went to farm for some mecha enemies in Fontaine as well, using another Hyper Boom Team. At this point, I wasn't really trying to maximize any damage, so I'm just trying out different team comps in general to see how well each character synergizes with newbie. Kyura in general really helped out a lot with her shield, and since I haven't activated my constellations yet, the shield came in clutch in moments like these. Anyways, I spent the majority of the day clearing out the mecha enemies in Fontaine, and I also went to visit the beach to get rid of the overpopulated crab enemies as well. In the end, I got a good amount of farming done and headed off for the night. I started off day 17 farming the unicorn boss, and by now I can proudly say that I'm an expert. Fighting this boss also made me want to activate the C1 constellation as well, because I could just get staggered like this, which made me kinda emo. We still got through the boss in the end, so it all worked out. Afterwards, I ascended Nuvis' weapon and leveled it up to level 70. After equipping the weapon, I reached 276% crit damage. So we're getting closer and closer to our goal. I decided to try out my damage against the Dorito enemies in the desert. And even though I had to sacrifice my HP since I'm not using my prototype Amber anymore, I was actually doing more damage now, even though my weapon is only at level 7. But I guess this was the power of 5 star weapons. Anyways, I was using the Raiden team again because so far from my experience, she's the best electro character for newbie. I used Tainari to help out with dental applications along with Baiju. And this team worked out just as good. I mostly spent the rest of the day wetting the desert enemies and finished up farming for the day. I started off day 18 by crafting a few weapon essential materials for Nuvis's weapon and successfully ascended the weapon to level 90. After maxing the weapon, I was able to get to 292% crit damage. Next, I went to Inazuma to farm for some Spectres. I basically just grouped up the enemies with Venti and just blasted the enemies with Nuvi. Since I was still at C0, I had Layla to provide some shields, so this was a pretty good team overall. I also went to farm for some Nagushis as well since I needed their drops, and was able to cross the ocean by charge attacking with Nuvalent, which was really convenient. Nuvi was able to deal around 60k burst as well, so I'm definitely starting to feel his power now. After a few more trips around Inazuma, I was able to cheat a little bit and dealt a 50k charge attack for the first time to a pyro slime. So it kinda accomplished my goal. Anyways, to finish up the day, I met with a unicorn for the very last time and gave it a quick shower to finish it off. So we're basically at the end game now. On day 19, I finally got Nuvalet to max ascension and also surpassed my 300% crit damage threshold thanks to the weapon. I decided to take my Nuvalet to fight against the bounty enemies. The first maker enemies were pretty sturdy but a couple of charge attacks were strong enough to finish it off. Next came the giant purple ball, and this happened. Yeah, I was able to do 50k charge attacks to it presumably due to having 3 draconic stacks, which you can tell by his shiny outfit and hair. The last bounty was against some Fatui enemies, and we were able to clean them up just as quick as well. I also went to the Fontaine beach area to kill some thyme and some crabs, and it was pretty smooth sailing for me as well. With the final day upon us, it's finally time to challenge the Spiral Abyss. Starting on floor 9, I brought a standard Hyper Boom team along with Zone Lee as a shoulder. Chamber 1 was pretty fast and easy, and a few charge attacks did the trick. The second chamber was also pretty easy with a Pyro Slimes for free Vaporize, and I was able to hit 95k on my charge attacks since I was able to obtain 3 Draconic stacks thanks to the Pyro enemies. We made it to Chamber 3, and there were only 3 opponents here. I just did the same thing and showered the enemies with water and dealt like 70k against them. Moving along to floor 10, it was a cakewalk for chamber 1. The enemies basically died after one charge attack rotation, so it was pretty easy. The next chamber also only had 3 enemies, and my double show team did a really good job protecting Nuvi from the lizard bishop enemies, so I was able to finish them off quickly. Finally, in chamber 3, there were only 2 ruin graders, and I just lined them up together and went for the kill. Starting out with the first chamber on floor 11, we had to defend the leyline monoliths, so I decided to use a freeze comp. With Nuvis' impressive range, she was able to prevent any enemies from getting close to the target and pretty much had a perfect half for the first chamber. For chamber 2, I used Venti to group all the specters up, and you could probably guess what happened next. Thankfully, there were no Hydro specters, so Nuvi was able to just blast them all until we eventually cleared the chamber. The final chamber had more Pyro Slimes in it, so we were able to deal some really nice damage thanks to the free Vaporize on the enemies. Even though the new Fontaine enemies had shields, Nuvi was still able to blast them through with serious damage. The rest of the enemies were all pretty weak as well, so we were able to complete floor 11. So before I start floor 12, I activated Nuvalet's C1 constellation. So now I'm ready to solo the Abyss with only Nuvi. I put him on my second half, so hopefully we'll be able to get the 36 stars. So for our first chamber, we had to deal with a lot of Rift Hounds. Since I am now at C1, I don't get interrupted by their attacks anymore even after taking damage. So I was able to focus on DPSing the whole way. Even though the Rift Hounds did a lot of damage, Yuvi can just collect the water droplets on the ground to heal up. There were some Pyro Abyss Mages that spawned afterwards, but Nuvi was able to take care of them easily. And I was able to get all 3 stars in the first chamber. 
The second chamber had a Fontaine ballerina enemies, and I had to watch out since their attacks deal a lot of damage. Soloing the boss was actually really exhilarating, because I was also in a time crunch, so I had to focus on both surviving and dealing damage at the same time, which made it really fun. With some good rotations with new V and clutch heals with the water droplets, we were eventually able to clear this chamber with maximum stars as well. Finally, in the last chamber, we had to solo the giant fidget spinner. This boss deals a lot of damage to us, so I had to sacrifice my DPS by avoiding the big farting attacks by jumping. Nuvi was able to deal around 20k charge attacks as well, and even though there were some close moments, this boss doesn't stand a chance. New Valet definitely live up to his hype. His gameplay just feels really fresh and damage wise he's undeniably top tier. Being a Hydro character, he can be used in countless teams, and Krabs will think twice before messing with him. Since I've set up a few goals for this Zero to Hero episode, let's go back and review each of them to see whether or not we completed them all. Our first goal was pretty easy. Even though it took almost the whole 20 days to get New V to level 90, we still achieved it in the end. There was some bad RNG getting the drops, so it took longer than I wanted. But we got to punish the seahorse more times, so it worked out in the end. My second goal was to deal 50k charge attacks. This was easily accomplished in a spiral abyss, especially after I got 3 draconic stacks, so the charge attack did a lot of damage. Speaking of the abyss, I was able to solo floor 12 with only Nuvlet as well. Sure, I did get his C1 and also his signature weapon, but it just shows how strong and impactful his C1 can be. My fourth goal was to get 300% crit damage. Thanks to New V's signature weapon, I was also able to achieve this feat as well. Finally, my last goal was to learn something I did not know before I started building New V. Well, there's definitely a lot of mistakes I made throughout these 20 days. First, I wasn't aware of New V's draconic stacks only procking with different elemental reactions. With C0, New V also needed a shield to support him, and my attacks were getting interrupted a bunch. The most important thing to take away from everything is probably this visual indicator after reaching 3 stacks with New V. His hair and parts of his outfit will glow, making it easier to see whether or not you have 3 draconic stacks. Overall, New V is probably one of the best DPS in the game, even at C0. Gameplay wise, I'm gonna rate him an S, just because of how easy it is to play him. Being a Hydro character, he's also the most flexible on the team and he's able to deal even more damage after a proper support for him gets released. Over the last 20 days of mini New V, he's probably going to be one of my Abyss teams going forward because of how easily he's able to deal big damage. The next candidate for me to raise from Zero to Hero is Rizzly himself, so make sure to let me know some of his team comp that you would like to see in the comments below. Also, if you're a New V main, let me know if I miss anything. Or you can comment your new Valet team comps as well in the comment section. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give this video a like. And if you want to watch more, consider subscribing to the channel. Also, don't forget to check out my Childhood Zero to Hero video here.